Okay, we'll be teaching from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We then, as workers together with Him, with God, we workers together with God, if we're His, this, uh, this letter was written to Christian church. You also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Verse 2. For He saith, I have heard thee in the time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now this for you too. We've got people here today that aren't saved. I could point out several to you. They've told me with their own mouth they're not saved. I hope that's not you. If you're not saved, you need to get saved today. Oh my, how important it is to be saved. I know several of you that aren't saved here in our uh, uh, in our congregation uh, this morning. Verse 3. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry not be blamed. We as Christians, we got to be good Christians, good church members, be so that we don't offend people. You know, the worst thing, just like I said yesterday, my wife and I were in a restaurant, and I talked to, I, 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 I go to that restaurant quite a bit, and uh, we shopped there, and I know this, this girl been there quite a while, and she's a nice girl, and I, just in a conversation I had, I thought she was a Christian, and she did say she was a Christian. I asked her where she went to church. She says, I ain't gone to church in a long time. Uh, she said, because I, I got mad at the preacher, I got offended, and I don't go to church anymore. And I says, well, that don't make no sense. Uh, that ain't helping you if a preacher has offended you not going to church. I mean, he ain't the only church in town. Go somewhere else. Said, come to our church. And I invited her. In fact, she took a piece of paper and a pen and she wrote it down. And she's she's got to work. She had to work today, but she says she's gonna come uh, Wednesday uh, evening uh, at six o'clock. So uh, we don't we don't offend. I shouldn't try to not, not if if my preaching offends you that I preach against sin and you don't like it. People come in here sometimes. People come in that are shacking up and. And uh, I start talking about uh, this wicked sin to shack up, and and uh, suddenly they fold their arms, and I might, if I stay on the subject a little longer, they might get out, up and stomp out the door because they don't want to hear the truth. Someone will tell me, yeah, they'll tell me soon. Pastor Varga, I'll have you know we've been going to, together for 10 years. That means we're married. No, it don't. It means you've been checking up for 10 years. It means the sin you committed last night was the same sin of a one-nighter. Now I'm getting some folks mad in here. Getting you mad. Don't get mad. Get convicted and repent and get glad. Huh? Get married. You, you claim you're a Christian. Get married or get apart. Uh, uh, we're we're going to talk about that today. Uh, we just got to the start of it. I didn't got to the message yet. This is preliminaries. But we're getting into the thing about what Christians ought to do and how they're supposed to live. My dear friends down here, they did. How, how long did you go together before you got married? Two and a half years. How many? How long? Two and a half. Oh, two and a half. Well, I thought it was longer than that. They got married in July, right? They're happy as a lark, holding hands, walking down the street and everything, and they got married. Aren't you glad you got married? Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? I believe in marriage. Did what? I believe in marriage. You believe in marriage. That's why you got married. Amen. Everybody believes in marriage. Marriage is they go stay with someone and go marry them. Amen? So that's the way it is. And, and, uh, a lot of times you women, you, you put up with a guy and you want to get married, but he don't, then kick him to the curb. <laughs> get rid of him. <laughs> Sorry, fellas. <laughs> but the ladies kind of like that, but be married. <laughs> I feel our bond is a lot stronger. Huh? I feel our bond is a lot stronger. Oh, yeah. Well, it's right. It's God's way. Anytime you do things God's way, it's the right way. Amen. Come on now. Amen. We do it God's way. All right. We go on. Uh, I got to get down here because I want to spend time on this. 
Get down to verse 11. Chapter 6, 11. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto, our heart is enlarged. You are not straightened in us, but are straightened in your own bowels. Now for recompense of the same, I speak of children. Uh, be ye enlarged. Now verse 14 here. This is the message. Listen, now look here. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Be ye not un unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, if you're saved. As God has said, I will dwell in them, and I will walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Then verse 17, look here now. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. Having therefore these, dearly, uh, these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You see, if you're going to cleanse yourself and, and, and perfect holiness in your life, you're going to have to be uh, separated from the world. Here's a problem with most Christians and most churches today. Churches too. You don't find many churches that are separated churches from the things of the world. You don't have that many churches that are that way. You've got a lot of churches that they drink and smoke and and uh, a lot of people in the church are shacking up and so on and so here here in the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians uh, Paul had a right to him in 1 Corinthians that they had a that they had folks in the church that there was a uh, that there was a fella uh, there was a stepson that was having sexual relationships with his stepmother and it was known in the church and nothing was done about it and and Paul wrote them and said look you, you're worse than heathens heathens don't even do that huh Is you're worse than unsaved people and yet they were practicing that openly in the church and the preacher did nothing about it, and the Christians did nothing about it. He said, you got to remove that cancer from your church. And so they did, and they, and they, they, they chastised the people openly, and they wouldn't quit, so they had to put them out of the church. You know, there's reasons to put... You say, no one should ever be put out of the church. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says if they live in that kind of uh, relationship, or if they're a known drunk and staying drunk all the time, you put them on the church. You say, well, that ain't right. How are you going to help me? I'll tell you. You say, how does that help them to put them on the church? I'll tell you how it helps them to put an adulterer or a fornicator or a homosexual or a drunkard or someone that's living in known sin. How does that help them? Because it makes them see the wrongness of their deal so they can repent and turn from that sin and get back into the church. Do you understand? We're supposed to have a clean church. We're supposed to have a church uh, uh, that is separated from the world. We don't have none of that today. You have very few. If, if you have a church like that, that that practices what I preach, and and uh, they're very they're few and far between. There used to be a lot more, but now nah, they they, they not. We look like the world. We have the music of the world. We have the dress of the world. Many churches today, big churches, they might have a uh, 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 ten thousand in their church. They have all kinds of people, uh, regular church members, and uh, uh, take the offering inappropriately dressed. When I say inappropriately dressed, I mean uh, not covered properly. Not covered properly. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 live, we live like the world. The church has taken on, and, and the fact of the matter is it doesn't make any difference. I talked to a guy that... Uh, recently, he did give me an um, uh, estimate on a job, too, and, and uh, he's a false teacher. He's a cult believer, and he's in a church that don't believe that way. 
he's a water salvationist and he's in a church and being an active member and a part and a leader in that church that don't believe that way. They don't even do enough to check on him to see that he's a cultist. Yeah. I know he is because I checked him out. I asked him. I'd ask him a few questions. I'll find out. Uh, if you believe you got saved when you got baptized, uh, you're wrong. And churches that teach that are wrong. But a lot of people that get in there and, and uh, they'll let them kind of people into their church and they come in here sometimes and I'll, uh, I'll talk to them and they'll say, well, that's the way I believe it. Uh, uh, here's what I tell them. You might think this is wrong, but, 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 but here's, what I, here's what I tell them. I say, well, we don't, we don't practice that in our church. We practice that you save by belief, by grace through faith. And it's not by good works, it's not by baptism, it's not by confirmation, it's not by church membership, it's strictly by belief. And they say, well, I believe that you, that you have to be baptized to be saved. And I says, well, okay, that's fine. I says, see you later, alligator. They said, what do you mean? I can't come. No, I said, I don't want you in my church. I says, because you're going to be spreading that around in our church, your, your, your her heretical teachings. I says, you just go to a church that believes it. There's plenty of them around here. I says, you just go to a church that believes the way you do, that believes that heresy, that you got to be baptized to be saved. And they said, well, I can't believe you put, you don't want me to come. No, I says, no, I don't want you to come here. Because you're a false teacher, and you're in a cult, and I don't want you in my church. You say you believe that way? Go down the street. This church right down the street believes that way. There's another one over that way. There's another one over that way. See, that's what's called a separated church. You say, well, that's a legalistic church. Well, call it whatever you want to. But it's a church that follows the Bible. And I'm going to read this over again to you. Because I'm sick and tired of your churches out there that you go to in Facebook, and a lot of you have been raised in and everything like that, of being unseparated churches. And you that are in our church and in other churches, you're unseparated people. You're worldly as a devil. You buy lotto tickets. You say, wait, you mean buy lotto tickets? Are yeah, it's gambling. <coughs> you fool. You chump. If you're going to gamble, at least get something that would be a better chance than a lotto. You know, you get, you get struck by lightning two times before you win a lotto. <laughs> you're a million on the lotto, huh? They lie. Remember, remember how they started all this lotto lie? They said they're going to they're gonna help our, they're going to just, uh, our school system. Make, and they, they say, they say they've given billions of dollars to the school system. I think they're mostly in administration, just people in the lotto collect the money. And our schools are getting worse. And we've been, they, you ever see them billboards? We've given so many billions and billions of dollars to the school system. Why can't they read and write? Why does Florida have some of the sorriest uh, uh, scores in America? And then worldwide, we're way down the list in school system. We just pour money towards education. And we turn out a bunch of idiots that can't read and write. They don't even teach them how to sign their name anymore. Do you know that? I felt so bad. My my granddaughter, who's a smart girl, and uh, I told her, sign your name. She says, I don't know how to sign my name. I says, what are you talking about? She says, I don't know how to sign my name. You know that in the school systems today, they don't teach cursive writing. Did you know that? They don't teach cursive writings. Cursive writing is when you sign your name. Remember you had that special pad of paper and you had that line that wasn't quite in the middle, but it's here and then so you can make your T's and your F's and all that. And remember that? That's oh, one yeah, first thing we did. Remember. All my grandma, and she's a smart girl. All, all, they, all the kids learn now is to print. You stay in kindergarten all your life printing. <laughs> Don't even know how to sign your name. They can't read, they can't add and subtract. I ask them if a kid. I, sometimes I'll be I'll be going on a checkout, and a young person will be be there, and I and I I, I have something. I said, well, this is this that and that, and and I'll, I'll add it in my head, and they got to go for the computer. They can't do nothing in their head as far as mathematics or anything yeah. goes. 
They can't add two and two to get four unless they got a computer in their hand. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that's the way it is. And uh, the ways of the world. Now, let's read this again. I want to talk about it a little bit more. Verse 14. Now, look at this. You got to read it. I'm telling you the truth. And I ain't a liar. I preach hard, but I preach, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Okay, what's a believer? A believer is someone that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and his shed blood and he was rose from the grave. I was saved in a Methodist church. My mom and dad were Assemblies of God missionaries. I'm a Baptist preacher. It has nothing to do with the Assemblies of God. It has nothing to do with the Methodist. It has nothing to do with the Baptist. It has to be do with a born-again Christian. And everybody that's a born-again Christian, a blood-washed, we sang three songs about the blood this morning, and the person that's a born-again Christian are not to be uh, yoked with an unbeliever. A believer is a born-again Christian. An unbeliever, not a church member, not someone has got a cross hanging around their neck, not someone that's joined the church. Born-again Christian. He must be born again. Are you born again? Then you're a believer. And if you are, you're not to be uh, uh, yoked up with unbelievers. It means you're not to join their associations. You're not to join their golf clubs. You're not to you're not to yoke up with them because they're not of God. I have some. I, I, I know some Christian businessmen that have partners that are unsaved. I would not have an I would not have an unsaved partner if I was a Christian businessman. I'd run my own business, or, I, or I'd have to be partners. But they're a good businessman. They ain't saved. They got wicked hearts. Oh, no, you don't know. This is a good man. Ain't no good man. They none righteous, no, not one. Did you know that? Right. All have sin. Only one that's good is good from God because you're saved. And if you are saved, don't be messed with this worldly crowd. Right. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? <laughs> Think about this now as we read it. This is the Bible. And what communion hath light with darkness? See? Righteousness and unrighteousness, light and darkness. The Bible always talks about light and darkness. Darkness being the devil, light being Jesus Christ and God the Father and the blessed Holy Ghost. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Christ God and Belial the devil. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? That's an unbeliever. Come on now, listen up, church. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Okay. For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, save people, born again, and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, look at verse 7, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Now, the Bible says in another part of Scripture, it says, we should be in the world, but not of the world. In the world, but not of the world. If I'm of the world, I join their golf clubs. I join their organizations. I become a mason. I do this. I even claim to be Christians, which there aren't. They're cultists. And on and on. So watch it. You're supposed to be distinctively different, and you're supposed to be citizens of heaven. Your citizenship isn't here, and you're not part of this wicked, unsaved society. That's what it's telling us right here. And it says here, And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. God says, I'll take you in then. And will be a father unto you, heavenly father, to save people. Amen. And shall you shall be my sons and daughters. Amen. Saith the Lord Almighty, the real God. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. So that's what we're talking about. And um, we're, the, we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. A lot, a lot of scriptures that talk about this. First John 2, start with verse 15. Love not the world, neither the sin, uh, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is of the world, why am I not getting this right? First John 5, 15 or 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is of the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life are not of the Father, 
but are of the world, and the world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That's First John chapter 2, start with verse 15. Now listen, I read that every night before I go to bed. I read the whole book of First John. It takes 15 minutes to read. I read it every night before I go to bed. I read it last night, night before, night before. I read it tonight, tomorrow night, and on and on. I read First Corinthians 13, the love chapter, do that every, 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 every night. And and uh, I, I read I read my Bible reading chart that I, I read the Bible I read the Bible I read the Bible but when you read the Bible it says you got to be separate from the world how about you what do you do you run with the world some of you you claim to know the Lord Jesus Christ and claim to be washed in the blood of Christ and uh, and, and, and and you sit around with unsaved people and drink and smoke marijuana and other dope and and you are interactions and have relationships with people sexual relationships and other relationships it isn't just a sexual relationship that's wrong it's relationships in general you're supposed to be separate from them and you're not supposed to be interwoven with people that do not know God and that's what this is talking about you say it's going to be kind of a lonesome well it's not going to be lonesome because you have Jesus. Someone says, I don't have anybody. I'll tell you about the God who is enough, amen. I'll tell you about a heavenly Father and a blessed Savior, Jesus Christ, and a blessed Holy. Fall in love with God. Get born again. And you won't need all these heathens to chum around with and drink with. In fact, you might not even have a heavenly Father. If you're real comfortable with the uh, with the dopers and wicked ones and sex crowd and all that if you're real comfortable with them people you probably uh brothers or sister to them in the devil amen that's what i think watch out watch out watch out be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what a communion hath light with darkness and what conquered hath Christ with Belial, the devil? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and, they, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters saith the Lord Almighty. Now listen, you need to get right with God. If you're a Christian, you need to separate from the worldly people, the worldly crowds. You might even have to quit your job. I wouldn't, I wouldn't work, I'm just, you say, uh, I wouldn't work in a place that sells alcohol. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell alcohol. I'm telling you, you see, I don't agree, I don't care if you agree with me or not, you want to. I, 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 just, I just wouldn't do that. I just, I, I separate from that crowd. Some take it so far as they won't even fly in an airplane because they serve drinks on the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> Some people take it that, I haven't taken it that far. Not as good as Christian as they are, I guess. <laughs> separate. How many of you say, I know I'm born, I'm not, I know I'm, I'm, I'm a born again, blood washed, like we were saying about the blood. I'm a blood-washed Christian, and I'm born again. I'm a saved person, and I know it. Anybody here know? Yeah. A couple folks, a few of you. God bless you. That's good. I'm glad you do. You need to live a separated life. You need to get rid of all these heathen friends. You need to get out of these heathen organizations. You need to quit going to the heathen places. Boy, well, I ain't getting many amens today, am I, huh? Getting awful quiet in here. Most of the church is so, well, I'm talking about people that really know the Lord, but you're so worldly and you're so dumbed down and, and, and you don't care who you associate with, you don't care who you did, and, and, and God is sick of you and tired of you, and he's about to want to spit you out of his mouth like to talk about in Revelation. Yeah. Lukewarm church, worldly church. God said, I'm sick of you, I'll spit you out of my mouth. Watch out. Watch out. Walk like a Christian, talk like a Christian, live like a Christian. Separate from this world. You need to make a decision. If you don't, many of you ain't even saved. You need to be saved. Out in Facebook and here, you need to be saved. But most of all, we as Christians, 
We don't have separated churches. We don't have separated Christians. We don't have separated lives. We need to do it for God's glory and for God's praise. Let us pray. Lord, thank you now for the born-again experience. Thank you for the admonition of the Holy Spirit of God. God giving us this admonition and teaching through Paul to the church at Corneth. Thank you, Lord. You shouldn't be an unclean. You know, be separate. And touch not the unclean thing. Get rid of all that uncleanness, unclean stuff, and unclean people, unclean organizations. What fellowship had light with darkness? What fellowship had Christ with Belial, the devil? <laughs> Lord, help us. We're living in a sad time. We're living in a wicked, backslidden, worldly church. Help us as true believers to live separate from it. There's people here in the audience, in church here, and out of faith need to be saved. You don't know you're saved. You're not 100%. You never really repented. God speaking to your heart. The Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. Let's pray the sinner's prayer now. Let's get right with God. Let's get saved. This is a prayer. Pray it in your heart. This is a prayer. God speaking to you. Turn to Christ. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus. I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart I turn from my sins to receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. I hope there's been many in church today and out there and on the internet been saved today. Now you're Christian. We as Christians. We have sin in our life, but we've got to turn from it. We've got to take this admonition from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And we've got to separate from the world and from the unclean things. What fellowship had light with darkness. Help us to renew and commit in our life to live for God and live with God's people and turn away from the world and live a separated life. Bible separation, how important. Nobody preaches it. Nobody practices it today. Help us as your people to do that. Help our church to do that as the right kind of church. Help us now. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. We pray you have decisions here. Dear saved person, repent, get right with God now. And those lost ones that have prayed after someone else that hadn't been saved, yet, call upon God. Oh, God, move in a mighty way in the saved folks and in the lost that they would be saved. Thank you for what you can do. We only look to you, Lord. We can do nothing. You can do everything. Thank you for the food. Bless our fellowship around the table, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now listen, I want to, uh, James, get you a piece of paper and a pencil. Uh, I'm, I'm starting something. Some people need this that don't have a place to take a shower. Uh, I started it on Thursday. Uh, does anyone want to, uh, uh, after we eat today, uh, is there anyone that uh, would like to take a shower here? We have facilities uh, here. Take a shower. If you want to take a shower, put your hand up. Just keep your hand up. Okay. Okay. James, you get get the name. Put, put your hand up. James will come around and get your name. Get Michelle in the back there, then get this lady here, and then whoever, get this gentleman over here. Just go around and get their names. Michelle is first. She's on the back row. You got her. This is the next lady here. Get her. Then come over here and get this gentleman's name over here. That'll be the order. One, two, three, Michelle first, this gentleman last. Now here's what I ask you, you people that are going to take a shower. We, we like to, uh, 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 one thing, a lot of times people don't want to take showers because sometimes people offer them a place to take a shower and it's nasty. Our place ain't nasty and it's clean, but I want you, it'll be clean when you step your foot in there. Then when you're done with your shower, uh, uh, he'll give you some... Uh, 
some spray. It's uh, uh, it's it's actually um, uh, it's it's a good spray. It, it it cleans and it and it disinfects. And all you have to do, and if everybody does it, we have no problem. You just just spray the shower when you're done, and spray down there where you walk, and and uh, and, and let's do that, and and leave it nice and and clean, so that so the next person uh, don't have to worry about stepping in and worry about whatever. You know what I mean? You understand that we're starting this, and but I think it is something we got three today. Maybe it'll be more. We've only got one shower, but it's here on the first floor, and it's accessible, and it's a nice shower. And uh, it's it's actually a nice little room. It's got a bathroom in there and a sink, and it's it's a, it's a nice room. It's even air conditioned, so it's 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 a quite nice shower room, better than you usually see. And 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 so uh, we'll start that, and we've got these three today, and then we'll be having that as a regular. Now another thing is uh, we've got access now to have a bus, and to pick people up, uh, but I. I I've got the cot on you because I can't be going over to get you and you ain't there. Yeah, right. um, if you if you're serious about wanting, if if you're and I if, if you're living the next block, I, you can walk over. You know, if you're a couple blocks away, or a lot of you ride bikes or this or that. But but if you're in a in a situation where you need transportation, bus transportation, um, I want to just get a count and see if it's worth running a bus tonight. Anyone that would be willing, uh, if you had transportation, because the buses don't run as well on Sunday. I guess they are only run uh, every hour, and then they don't run late. But if, uh, if, if you're in need, thank you, ma'am. You notice I'm done preaching, right? <laughs> uh, uh, who, would, uh, uh, who would need transportation? To be picked up and dropped off uh, tonight uh, for church. If 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 you would care to, if you need tra if you get here on your own, that's fine. But if you need transportation, just raise your hand if you would. Anybody? Okay, we won't have to run no bus tonight then, because no one needs transportation. But I hope you make it to church, and uh, we're looking forward to having a good service tonight. So. God bless you. You can go over and say, we'll have our normal services. We'll have church tonight at 6, of course, be here. And then our normal services next week, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday night at 6. And then our normal service. Just find us seats over there and bring it to you right away. Pastor Marty, we're going to have to leave because.